Okay. So now I want to talk to you about the lab write-up for Lab 6. Now, this is an individual report and it's worth more, so it's important that you pay attention. Okay, you already got all your data. If you don't have your data, well, then you got a problem. Anyway, so what do you do? The first thing is there's several different parts to this. There's an objective, a theory, procedure, data, and conclusion. Okay, now the data one is the easy one. Why? Because you already have that data. So first I just want to talk though about what each section should involve. Okay, the first one is the objective. What is the objective of the experiment that we did? Do you know what it is? It is not, and I repeat, it is not finding G. I think this part is worth, don't quote me on this, but I think it's worth 10 points. If you put that the objective is to find G, you get a zero on that part. It is not to find G. Okay? If it were, we'd just look it up on the internet and be done with it. All right? We did it three different times, plus we looked it up on the internet. Why did we do all that? If our objective was to find G, it would have been a lot easier if we just looked it up on the internet. So think about that. Okay? Go ahead. Think about it. I'm waiting. All right, really I'm not. Okay, um, now the second part is the theory part. And this is the part which most people seem to have the most trouble on. Mostly because they just try to, you know, uh, do a snow job on it and pretend that that they can just write some crap in here and that I'll accept it. I'm not going to. Okay? Here is the way not to do it. You say, first of all, you only need to do the, the theory part on part one of the Finding G Lab. It doesn't make sense for the rest of them for various reasons. Okay. Now, if, if what you do for the theory on part one is say, yeah. describe the experiment and then um, put, to find G, we use the formula from physics, G is equal to the, equal to A divided by sine theta. So from physics we know that. You don't. All right? You have to derive it. Now, for example, let's look at the way we derived for the uh, formula for, for in lab four. I wrote it all out on the piece of paper here on my desk. I showed you how you go through it. You draw pictures and stuff like that. The theory section for part one should include at least two pictures. The first picture should be a picture of your experimental setup showing how you calculated the angle theta. Remember, it's not that important what the angle theta is. What's important is that you know it and can measure it accurately. What you have to describe in that first part of the theory section there is how you got the angle theta. Now how you use it, how do you get to that formula that g is equal to a divided by sine theta? It is not a one-step process. Again, if that's the only formula you have on there, you are going to get a zero. All right? Again, if you just say, I'm going to say this one more time, because some people are not going to listen to me. I know this from past experience. This part is worth something like 35 percent of the, of the uh, lab grade, if you put that from physics, we know that G equals A divided by sine theta, you will get a zero on the theory section of the lab. A zero. What you have to do is you have to say, okay, now I've got my theta, we draw a triangle, and we have to, just like we did on the lab four one, I put, I put the, uh, the cart here as a block, and I draw arrows showing what the gravitational force is. And what you're going to quickly realize is you don't really know how you got that, the, that formula at all. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. One is you can think about it and figure it out yourself. That's good. You can also look it up on the Internet. What do, you, what do I mean there? Well, if you go to Google and you say G ramp, physics, you'll probably find something useful. I don't know for sure. I haven't tried it. Okay. If you really have a lot of trouble, send me an email or something. Okay. But the point is you have to figure out why is it, for example, why is it G is equal to A divided by sine theta instead of cosine theta or tangent theta? How did that happen?
Hmm? I don't know. You've got to convince me that you understand that. Okay? Remember, that's 35 points. This is the part that most people have the most trouble on. Do a good job on it, all right? I knew you could. All right. The next part is the procedure. In the interest of time, all you have to do on the procedure is write we're using the procedure from page whatever of the lab manual with the, fo with the following differences. And there's only a couple little differences. If you write more than a paragraph on that, you're probably wasting my time reading it. I got a lot of these to read. Please make it short and concise. But concise means not only short, but it also means uh, adequate. All right. The next section is the data section. That's right from your lab manual. You filled out that sheet. I don't want the whole lab uh, lab, lab manual. I only need that one page. All right, one page. And it should go just as a separate section. Not hard at all. Okay. And the last part is the conclusion. The conclusion say, what did you conclude from this experiment? You should not conclude that G is equal to 9.8. We already knew that. All right. Conclude, look at what you did and come to some conclusion based on what you did. All right. Think about it. That's for me. You should also include for each of the experiments you did, error sources. This will help you form your conclusion. For example, on the ramp, what is the, what are the big source of errors? There's two. Two. Big number three, my lord. Big number three. Okay. For the second, the second uh, section, which is the uh, falling ball, there's one source of error. How significant is it? For the third section, there is also really one significant source of error. How big is it? Which one do you think will give you the most accurate answer, or should, based on what you realize the oh, yeah. sources, potential sources of error are? Remember, those are potential sources, not actual sources of error. You don't really know what your actual source of error are, errors are, really, in a lot of ways, because if you did, you could fix it. Okay, so let's review this thing here again. Part one is the objective. It is not finding G. Part two is the theory, but only for section one. All right, only for section one. This is the only part that's only for section one. And it should not be that from physics we know that G equals A sine divided by sine theta. God, I hate that. It does make it easy for me to grade. Uh, third part should be procedure, and it's just where we deviated from the lab manual. You say this is we did it from the lab manual. And this is where we changed, did something different. And again, that's for the whole lab. Part four is the data. Should be your data from the lab. Please don't make up your own form. Please use the one from the lab manual. That's why I had you email it to yourself or save it on a flash drive. It's kind of annoying to me to, you know, expect certain things to be in certain places when I'm trying to grade these. Don't make it hard for me. Part five is conclusion. Conclusion should be about all your lab, not just part one. Some people think that. Also, okay, oh yeah, a couple of things is. There's not one lab write-up for each yeah. section of the lab. It's Where is wrong. It? What? It's wrong. Oh, Ron. Tell him to call him back. Okay. Um, he said he'd call you back. Oh, there it is. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, okay. <laughs> Some people, every once in a while, will come up with a thing that says that they have to, uh, they, they think that they have to write up a separate section of the lab, like a separate objective for part one, part two, and part three, and part four. And then a separate theory for part one, part two, part three, part four, and a separate date, and a separate conclusion. Don't do that. It's all, there should be one objective section, one theory section, one procedure, one data, and one conclusion section. That's it. All right? If you, t if you go and make up your own format for the, uh, for the lab report, then I'm not going to be very kind to you when it comes to grading. It's annoying to me. All right, you're given directions on how to do this, follow those directions. Okay. Now, I think I've said enough times that if you write that G is equal to A divided by sine theta from physics or something like that, you're going to do badly. 
if anybody doesn't understand that, well, you're going to do badly. <laughs> it's that simple. All right, now did I forget anything about this lab write up? I'm trying to think of anything here. Ah, uh, yes, very important. Very important. You can hand it e either a hard copy next week, next Friday, actual paper copy, or you can email it to me. If you email it to me, it should be a Word document, not a PDF, RTF, OGK, whatever. Word document. If you do not understand what that means, either find somebody who does, figure it out, ask me, but don't just assume that I mean, you know, oh, PDF or RTF will do fine or my, uh, whatever. So I get some really weird things in there. No, Word document. All right. It should be one file. That means that you have to take the data file that you email to yourself, and you have to include it in the file. You do not, you cannot, must not make it as two separate files. Okay. If you make it as two separate files, say, oh, sometimes people do this to me. It's, you know, I couldn't figure out how to put it together in one file. Well, I couldn't figure out how to give you one grade. If you do, if you if you put it as two separate files, I will look at the first file, and if that's your data file, I think that's worth like 35 points. Then you'll get graded. The maximum grade you can get is 35 points. If the first file you give me is all the rest of it, then the maximum grade you get is 65 points. Okay, so one file, one hard copy, and if you give me a file, please do not bring a hard copy, too. All right. Because then what ends up happening is I put all the hard copies together and I end up grading your report twice. They're not very interesting to start with. When you get a grade, about 50 of them, they get kind of boring. Okay? So just one hard copy or one electronic copy. Alright? Now there aren't any... Everyone's supposed to be asking this too. Is, it says in, your, in the lab manual you have to include any graphs. We, have, we don't have any graphs, so what do we include? Well, if you don't have any graphs, then you don't have any graphs. That's easy. Okay, there aren't any graphs in this one. If you have any questions, please send me an email. By the way, they disconnected my phone. Yeah. Well, I hadn't checked it since 2006, so they said, do you really need it? And I said, no. So, sorry about that. Anybody's tried to call me. I wasn't listening. Okay. Take care. Bye.